Welcome back. This is section 9.3 of astronomy, apparent motions of the sun, and today's aim is to draw and explain the path of the sun over the course of the year. So first, let's talk about how the sun appears to move like other stars. So we talked about star motions in our prior lesson. So we know that stars appear to rise in the east and set in the west. The same thing happens with the sun. So why does it appear to move the same way? Well, keep in mind that the sun has a parent motion, since it's really the earth that's rotating that makes it appear to make that arc in the sky. So we're going to start with our first um, main date, which is June 21st, which of course is the summer solstice. So let's review some important information about this date. On this date, the sun appears to rise north of east and set north of west. We're going to draw this in a minute, but first let's copy this information into our um, notes, and we're then going to put it into our chart. So the sun is appearing to rise a little north of east and setting a little north of west. This, of course, has to do with where the sun is in its orbit and the fact that it's, the northern hemisphere is tilting towards the sun on this day. So the rays are most north. The direct rays of the sun are most north on this day. So we end up with about 15 hours of daylight in New York State. Um, we have the longest day of the year here because the, the path of the sun is the longest path. The sun is directly overhead um, if you are at the Tropic of Cancer at 23 and a half degrees north in latitude. And the altitude of the noon sun in New York State is about 71 degrees. This is the highest that the sun ever reaches in New York State over the course of the year. This is a diagram of what the sun's path looks like on a celestial sphere, which we're going to now draw on our next slide. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is label our compass directions on here to give us some pers uh, perspective. So here we're going to label this south, this would be north, this will be west, and this will be east. So here's our observer. Um, we're doing July 21st. So notice we said that the sun is rising north of east, so this would be north of east, this would be due east, this is due west. So this is exactly on east, exactly on west. The sun is going to rise north of east and set north of west. So we're going to draw in the positions of our sunrise and sunset, and we'll also draw in the position of the altitude of the noon sun. So we said the noontime sun is at 71 degrees, which would be right about here. Okay, so then we're going to draw from the rising position in the east, we're going to connect to the noontime sun and then come down to our setting position. Notice this is the sun coming up, rising. This would be noon and this would be the sun now setting. So what time would it be right here? Here the sun is at the horizon. This would be at about 6 a.m. And now this is noon. This is the noontime sun. This is when it's the highest in the sky. And this would be at sunset, which let's say is about 9 p.m. on June 21st. So we could figure out the approximate times as the sun is rising to noon and then setting on the way down to 9 p.m. So if we had the sun right here, we could figure that that would be about 9 a.m. And if we were over here, it would be at about 3 or 4 p.m. Notice that the sun is in the southern part of the sky. Okay, any time that we look for the sun um, outside, you'll, at noontime, you'll always find it in the southern portion of the sky. So if it's noontime, and the sun is in the southern part of the sky, where would he find his shadow? So if the sun is here, his shadow is going to be cast behind him, and his shadow will point towards the north. So anytime you're looking for your noontime shadow in New York State, if you turn around, it'll be pointing towards the north, because the sun is always in the southern part of the sky. Our next date that we'll talk about is March 21st. This is the vernal or spring equinox. Equinoxes, remember, are very special days. 
Um, this is when the sun appears to rise due east and set due west. So this is, everything lines up just perfectly on the equinoxes. It's rising right on the east and setting right on west. There are equal hours of daylight, so 12 hours of daylight on the equinoxes every place across Earth's surface. And direct rays of sun are right at the equator. The altitude of the noon sun in New York State is about 48 degrees, so it's about halfway up. And this is what this path looks like, which we're going to draw. So let's label our compass directions. South, north, west, and east. So on March 21st, we said the sun rises due east, which is exactly on east and sets due west, which is exactly on west, and it reaches an altitude at noon of 48 degrees. So we're going to find 48 degrees on our celestial sphere, which is about right here. And now we'll just connect, rising from the east to noon, and then setting due west. Okay, so rising. And setting. Notice this is your sunrise position, which is about 6 a.m. And this is your sunset position in the west, which is about 6 p.m. 6 p.m. And this is our noontime position. Okay, so if this is 6 a.m. and this is noon, Right in between here would be about 9 a.m. And setting from noon until 6 p.m. in the middle here would be about 3 p.m. And again, the sun is always in the southern part of the sky, so our shadow always is pointing towards the north. December 21st, which is our winter solstice, the sun appears to rise south of east and set south of west. So our shortest day of the year is December 21st, so we also have the shortest path that the sun takes on this day. There are only nine hours of daylight. Remember that the sun direct rays are all the way down south from us at 23 and a half degrees at the Tropic of Capricorn. And the altitude of the noon sun in New York State only reaches about 24 degrees, so very low angle in the sky. And this is what this path appears to look like. So here's our path for December 21st. Let's label our compass directions. North and south, east and west. And we said on this day that the sun rises south of east and sets south of west. So here's south, we're going to the south of east, to the south of west, and it only reaches about 24 degrees in altitude. So we're going to go from rising to noon to setting. You can see how much shorter this path is than the other two special days of the year, which is why there's only nine hours of daylight. Our last day, September 23rd, which we can also estimate as September 21st. This is our uh, autumnal or fall equinox. Again, equinox, special day. We have the sun appearing to rise due east and setting due west. So our equinoxes, everything lines up just right. Everything's exactly on east, exactly on west. We have equal hours of daylight, 12 hours all across Earth's surface. And the sun's rays direct rays are exactly at the equator on the equinoxes. Altitude of the noon sun, again in New York State, is at about 48 degrees. So this path actually looks exactly like the March path, the vernal equinox. Both equinox paths are exactly the same. Okay, due east, setting due west, and reaching about 48 degrees in altitude. So let's draw it. Okay, let's draw in our compass directions. On the equinoxes, the sun always rises due east and sets due west and reaches 48 degrees in altitude. We'll connect our sunrise to noon path to sunset. And I always like to draw it in the arrows just so we keep in mind this is the path that it takes.
So if we look at a, um, looking at the sun's path for two other dates of the year, uh, for June 21st, we see that the sun reaches its highest angle in the sky in New York. And we can see in December, it's at a much lower angle in the sky. So let's fill in this chart to put together all the information we've learned about the, um, the sun's path and the way it affects Earth over the course of the year and for each season. Okay, so we should know, we should know all of this information, and I'm going to fill this in with you. The autumnal equinox is fall equinox, that would be 921. The winter solstice, 1221. The vernal equinox, or spring equinox. And the summer solstice would be 621. The direct rays so let's do the easier one first. The equinoxes are always going to be at the equator for the equinoxes. In winter, they're farthest from us since it's colder by us, so it's 23 and a half degrees south. And in summer, they're closest to us at 23 and a half degrees north. How many daylight hours are at the equator? The equator is actually the easiest one to talk about. The equator always has equal hours of day and night, so it's always 12 at the equator. How about at the North Pole? On the equinoxes, it's 12 hours everywhere on Earth, so we can actually fill in the South Pole as well. 12 hours of daylight on the equinoxes. Now the North Pole, on the winter solstice, remember the North Pole is tilting away from the Sun, so there's actually zero hours of daylight. And the South Pole is facing towards the Sun on the winter solstice. And uh, the summer solstice, the North Pole is facing towards the Sun, so that has 24 hours of daylight. And the South Pole is tilting away, so that has zero. Sunrise direction in New York State. So the sun is always going to rise on the equinoxes due east. For our equinoxes due east. In the winter, it's the shortest path, so it's rising south of east. And in the summer, it's the longest path, so it's rising north of east. Sunset on the equinoxes is due west. In the winter, it's the shortest path, it's setting south of west. In the summer, it's the longest path, and it would be setting north of west. This pen is terrible. North of west. The noon sun on the equinoxes reaches 48 degrees in altitude. on both of the equinoxes. The winter, it's lowest in the sky. It's about half that at 24 degrees. And in the summer, it's the highest path at 71 degrees. Daylight hours in New York State on equinoxes, it's 12 hours everywhere. 
Winter, we have our shortest day at nine hours. And our longest day in summer is about 15 hours. Let's make this look like a 12 better. Okay. And there you have it. That ends the section 9.3, Apparent Motions of the Sun.